Gotta keep going strong on 10 what I'm on Having doubts about this, but I've been writing my wrongs Feel this in my songs, feel this through my bones Think about why I just do this, then I'm back in my zone On the road to riches, yeah Lord knows I'm on a mission, yeah I'm here with Christian Coleman, the 2019 World 100 Meter Champion We're at Westlake High School, you spent a fair yeah. bit of time here Tell me about how much of your athletic prowess we can trace back to your years here um so this is this is my hometown south side of atlanta georgia um i went to school here actually my freshman year mm -hmm. and then i ended up transferring that's a story for another day but i mean yeah this is where i'm from my parents live five minutes up the road um this is where i grew up my childhood so i felt like it was very fitting to you know what i'm saying come back here and talk with you here so so one of the things that I love about your story and about your career arc is, mm -hmm. like me, you were undersized in high school. Right. But of course, when you grew up in Georgia, a football crazy state, yep. you wanted to play football and yeah. they told you, eh, you're too small. How much of that do you draw off of as an athlete now? Yeah, like you said, I mean, Georgia is a heavy football state. And so that was my influence growing up. I thought, you know, football would be my ticket to go to the next level. Um, but when it comes down to figuring out how you're gonna, you know, pay for college and go to the next level, track just seemed to be like my, my best option. But in high school, you know, I was getting recruited by some smaller schools, but I, I always felt like I deserved to, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> um, be recruited by, you know, some, some bigger schools. You know, I would go to camps and like coaches would tell me, you know, they like my, my speed and everything, but just a little bit too small. And so um, that definitely, you know, put a chip on my shoulder um and kind of just you know motivated me uh to to i guess in track and field you know i take that same kind of mindset um that i would have in football just having that chip on my shoulder um uh, from being told i was too small not big enough um and uh i mean but that's why i like track and field you know just because i feel like it doesn't matter your size it doesn't matter you know what you look like or anything like that it's just purely about you know who can get to the line first and so um yeah, that's why I feel like I, I chose the right path. So your ascent to the top was relatively quick. You were in uh, the 2017 World Championships. You get the silver medal ahead of Bolt behind Justin Gatlin. And then two years later, you come back and you win the world title at a relatively young age in a new personal best time. I want yeah. you to take me back to those those moments you cross the line it's the most exuberant i've ever seen you and fittingly so you just won the world title yeah. tell me about the, the the hours and the days immediately after that race so i mean 2017 i, I would have to say that's probably one of the the better seasons you know what i'm saying that i have it was mm -hmm. definitely my coming out season for sure it was a long collegiate season um i had like a few collegiate records a few national titles and then um everything was just kind of leading up to that world championship with me and Gatlin and, and, and Bolt. I think that's just like the, the pinnacle of the sport. Like, yes. I, don't, I don't think you've experienced like any, anything like it on like the, the track and field scene until you've like gone and been like a world championship or an Olympic final. Like, I mean, um, just leading up to it, I mean, it was just so intense. I can remember like being in the back of the, in the warm up area, you know, and it's just down to like eight guys mm -hmm. and our coaches and, you know, <laughs> saying that the track is like clear and everybody just, you know, listening to music and, you know, just locked in, just getting ready. And um, it was intense. And I, I feel like that's that's the, like, highest level of the sport. And I feel like that's where I'm my best. That's where I feel like I, I thrive at. And so I, I feel like that was definitely one of my, my favorite moments in the sport, especially with it being Bolt's last race. It was a historic race. <laughs> um, and so, I don't know. I mean, looking back on that, that moment, I mean, it was – it was pretty exciting, especially because I was I was so young. I was I was 21 at the time. I had just came out of college. Mm -hmm. I had just signed my, my professional contract, and so everything was kind of like all new to me. Um, but I just wanted to go out there and compete and um, and have fun. And so it was a pretty exciting moment in my career. So that's 2017. Sure. Yeah. But then in two years two years time, you come back, and it's not even close. You won the world title in Doha in one of the largest margins ever what was that was that one that one had to be different because uh, now this one you'd been there before you knew right. what to expect yep. and you responded with an amazing performance and that's why i feel like everything happens for a reason because I, I got um a silver medal in 2017 just by 
you know what I'm saying? It's the smallest of margins. But I feel like I needed that experience because, you know, it just leaves room for improvement, makes you a little bit more hungry to try to go and get the gold medal. And so, like you said, I was 2017 and 2019, um, basically like the, the same race, you know what I'm saying? We, we ran it back in Doha, and uh, I was able to come out on, on top of Gatlin in that, in, in that, uh, in that race. And it was kind of like a, a sigh of relief too, because I, before then, you know, I, I hadn't uh, beaten him before, especially at you know, a championship. And so, um, yeah, that was that was, I guess, one of the highlights of my career too, winning that gold medal. So, yeah, that was a good one. 2019, your world yep. champion. To back up your silver medal from 2017. Yep. But then, your career takes a little bit of a turn, because mm -hmm. you are suspended for whereabouts violations. And right. it means that effectively, the 2020 season is wiped out, but you're also going to miss the games. Mm. For a young athlete, being suspended for something like that, take me through finding out that you were going to be suspended yeah. and that you were not going to be at the Olympic Games and what that must have felt like for you. Right. I mean, that whole process was just so, um, it was definitely a, a dark time. And I feel like I like we were talking, you know, yesterday. I wouldn't really wish that on my worst enemy for real, just because like the process is so grueling and long, having to go through like hearings and talking to people and trying to defend your name and seeing like your name versus world athletics, you know, in a sport that I've done like since I was five years old. You know, it, I feel like it just it hurts, like it's heartbreaking, you know what I'm saying? Because this is a sport that I love, you know what I'm saying? Something that I've done. My, my whole life and the way I feel like life works is whatever you put into something, you know what I'm saying, it'll give it to you right back. And when I feel like I'm dedicating my whole life to, you know what I'm saying, track and field, like this is what I love, but it's not loving me back. You know what I'm saying, it's just, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And so having to go through that, that process, um, you definitely can slip into some, you know, some dark times, some, some depressing moments. But I feel like what got me through it, I mean, just, just being around my family, being around people who don't, look at me as Christian Coleman, the guy, you know, who they see on TV or who they see on the track, you know, just me as a person. And I think going through that, I think it really just helped me separate the two. I feel like for so long, especially as an athlete, a, a high level competitive athlete, you kind of equate your, your self-worth to, you know, how your sport goes. Mm -hmm. And going through this, I feel like it gave me opportunity to, um, even though it was dramatic and, you know what I'm saying, most people's processes is a little bit different having to separate the two. But, you know, I just kind of had to figure that out on the fly. Like, you know, track and field doesn't really define me. Um, it's just, you know, what I do. Like you said, I mean, going through it, I'm still training, um, not knowing whether or not I would be eligible or not. And then finally finding out, you know, I would be suspended like through the Olympics. It was tough, it was tough. When you got handed down the suspension, I paid attention to how the public reacted. And the consensus among the public was, this is a young man who is the world champion in the 100. He's getting paid a lot of money to do this thing, which by, by your own admission, you said you love. Mm -hmm. He's got to be more responsible with being there when they come to test him. So I want yeah. you to talk specifically to those fans of yours who were disappointed at you getting the suspension because they felt like this is something that's avoidable. Yeah. Um, I mean, I agree with you. I, I feel like it's definitely something that is avoidable. Mm -hmm. um, and on one hand, you know, I'm a little conflicted. I, I feel like I definitely have to be more responsible. You know what I'm saying? I have to take the time every single day to update the whereabouts app make sure even if I had to wait by the you know door or wait in my living room for an hour of every single day and wait on a tester to come even if they don't just because that's what the rules are that's what I have to do and I have to take responsibility for um for my side of the the, the situation just being more responsible basically because you know it's really like a, a paperwork type of thing you know updating your whereabouts I mean that that's on me I just you know have to be more responsible so now you've so now you've served your suspension you had to sit in Eugene and watch the Olympic trials, and you had to watch the Olympic Games in Tokyo from home. Did that bother you at all? Did you feel like this is unfair, or you know what, this is this is basically what I have to deal with? 
by the time the Olympics actually came around in the trials, mm -hmm. I had already came to terms with the, the situation and the cards that I had been dealt. And I, you know, was just preparing for the future and what I need to do to be ready for when I do return. Just because at that point, I had been going through it for like two years, you know what I'm saying? At that point, since like 2019. And so, I, yeah, I, I I feel like going going through it, I mean, was the like worst part of it, you know, going through the hearings, like going through, like I was saying earlier, and seeing your name, like versus World Athletics, like I feel like that was kind of the, the like, thick of it and then like by the time you know they had gave me the suspension gave me my fate what was going to be I had already came to terms with it and accepted it and um just kind of like moved on from it really so I think fans of American track and field as well as Christian Coleman fans will say okay that sounds great what material steps what actual steps have you taken to make sure that this can never happen to you again did you get a ring doorbell? Like what? Like what did you? Absolutely. What did you have to change where you go, never again? Yeah. So I definitely got a ring doorbell. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, anybody comes to my door, you know, I'll be notified. Right. And just being more diligent, you know, I have an alarm on my phone okay. every single day to remind me to, you know, update the whereabouts. Mm -hmm. Just being more responsible. Just being more mature. I'm 25 now. I mean, this. is happen you know what i'm saying when i'm when i'm 23 and right. i mean it don't seem like that long of a time but i think anybody who's going through that transition from you know i turned pro when i was 21 you know just learn trying to learn how to be a professional um and trying to figure it out every single year you just get better and better at it and you just become like more and more mature and so you know just being more diligent really just making sure you know every single day uh update my whereabouts make sure that you know i am where i'm supposed to be that's pretty much it. It's really, it's really simple. Honestly, it's really simple. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Just being more diligent about it, being more responsible. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm, I was guessing this year in 2021, watching the 100 meter season unfold, I was like, there's nothing that I've seen this year that I think is going to cause Christian any concern. What, give me your assessment of what you saw in 2021 with you not being on the scene. In the hundred meters. <laughs> well, you had to be entertained. There were all sorts of quarter milers, including Fred Curley, who would get the Olympic silver, dropping down into yeah. your event. Um, that that had to that had to amuse you a little bit, seeing guys who <laughs> we're not used to. I mean, come on, we're not used to seeing quarter milers that right. consistently or that running that the hundred meters that well. Right. I mean, like you said, I didn't really see anything that really concern me but me as a competitor I mean it wouldn't have matter like what happened I feel so like somebody could have run 965 this year and you'd say okay that's the target now yeah no I'm not really concerned about I feel like me as a competitor I just kind of like focus on me mm -hmm. like just focus on like my times in practice like what I need to be doing in order to be prepared when I do step out there but me as a fan of the sport uh, you know, I definitely watched. I was definitely, you know what I'm saying, keeping up with everything. That's pretty much all I could say, really. I mean, I was just watching, but I didn't really see anything. Now I'm just like, man, you know, I need to be concerned or anything like that. All right. So in, uh, in, in 2019, after you, got the, after you got the world title in the 100, you then came back to lead off the U.S. 4x1, uh, which for the first time since 2007, got the baton around, dominated the rest of the world, and won the Olympic gold. And a lot of people said, ah, the U.S. is back. Right. And then Tokyo happened, where they got the baton around with the four top finishers from the Olympic trials, and it wasn't good enough to make the final. What were your thoughts watching that team in Tokyo? What, what did you see as the problem? Because everybody, everybody felt like, we don't understand right. why this team isn't right. in the final. I mean, from my perspective, it just seemed like they lacked a little bit of of, of leadership, mm. you know, somebody to take the reins and sit everybody down and, and make sure that everything's straight and make sure that everybody's on cue, make sure everybody's on point, make sure everybody's doing what they need to do in practice because that's just kind of what it looked like when they got out there, just like they lacked, uh, you know, practice, like they didn't put the time in beforehand that they should have. And I mean, when you get to that high level where like every country, you know, has fast guys and, and they working on their sticks and they know their relay legs, you know, months in advance. And for, you know, US athletes, we find out, you know, at the, not even at the trials, you know, after the after the trials, you know, who's gonna actually be on the team. And it might be maybe a week or two before where they, you know, start training. And so 
I say I, I feel like that's just what I came away with. Just they lacked a little bit of leadership, and I think they just needed a little bit more time to 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 to, to practice really. All right, so let's let's fast forward now to present day. How optimistic are you now that you are eligible once again to return to the sport? Um, how did you train when you were suspended? How hard did you train? Did you feel like, are you anticipating that you are going to be rusty when you come back? Not really. I feel like just me as a professional, I mean, that's just what comes with it. You gotta be prepared when you step out there. And I think during this time, I just really had to lean on my coach and um, just allow him to, to work his magic, really. You know, just tell me what I need to do in order to be prepared. During the suspension, I mean, I was just kind of doing like some, some general stuff, like just a lot of like, I guess, fall training type of stuff. Um, just building the, you know, base, staying fit, staying active. Weren't, wasn't really doing too much like speed work. And I mean, I just kind of came into this season just like, you know, any other, any other. I kind of started my fall training a little bit earlier, and so I've been feeling good. So I don't, I don't really have any concerns. I guess I'll be not necessarily nervous, just a little bit anxious, just because I haven't competed in so long. So I'll be really interested to see like how you know I feel when I actually get back out there. What my times will be like, like how the progress of my season will go. It'll all be a little new, just because I mean, like, um, I mean, having a suspension. I mean, that's not something that you you know foresee happening. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really interested. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm optimistic. Uh, I've been feeling good in practice. I'm ready to roll. I mean, not too much longer. And um, I'll be back out there. Well, you're coming back to a sport which has been thrown a little bit off, as have many sports, by the pandemic. So it means that you're coming back to Worlds in 2022, Worlds in 2023, the Olympics in 2024, Worlds again in 2025. You literally have four championship seasons that has to make you celebrate and that's why i was talking to with my agent like you know this whole time is like if it was any championship to miss i mean like it kind of worked out for the best you know just because we got so many championships lined up for the next few years and so um i'm pretty excited you know we got world championships coming up then um you know olympics and world championships and so it just, I'm, I'm just optimistic, you know, and I think it's just giving me an opportunity to really like submit my legacy in the sport, really uh, go out and, and prove to myself. That's what I feel like I, I, I have to do now. I mean, go out and, and prove to myself that I am who I feel like I am, and I'll have the opportunity to do so over the next few years. I'm pretty excited about it. So the world record has now been there for 12 years by Usain Bolt, 9.58. When I hear you say, you're excited about what you can do. Is what you can do approaching that record or breaking it? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, honestly, I feel like if anybody can do it, if anybody um, has the ability and has the capability to do it, I think it's me. Just from you know how I've been feeling in practice, um, just looking at my progression, you know how I've been feeling in the weight room, just getting stronger, becoming like more lean. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, I think it's in my, I think it's in my, in my wheelhouse. I think it's in my capabilities. But I try not to, to focus on times. Like I feel like for that to happen, it would just have to be like the, the perfect day. You know, you got to be ready to peak. Um, got to be on a fast track. Like good weather, maybe a good wind behind you. It just kind of has to happen. I feel like my whole mindset and what's got me to where I'm at is just kind of focus on like winning. Like just focus on winning each race. Just letting the times just, just come with it. And so. I definitely think it's in my <clears throat> in my capabilities, um, but I try not to to focus too much on it because uh, I feel like when I do that I kind of press, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really want to press for times. I just want to go out there and just just run and try to win each race and um, just let the times come. But I definitely think I'm capable of it though, for sure. In this time that you had off, what was the thing you missed most? Because I'm I'm. Uh, it is clearly coming across to me that you have a huge love for track and field. Yeah. So when somebody takes away something that you love for that long, there has to be a lingering effect. What right. was the thing that you missed the most while you were out? I mean, it, it wasn't like I took it for granted before um, because I feel like I've always just been grateful for my, my talent, my abilities, always putting God first and, and knowing that, you know, 
everything that he gives you, you know, he can take away, you know, just like that. Um, and so I always just try to stay prayed up. But I mean, when you have a situation like this happen, I mean, you just miss like the small things really, or, like the feeling that you get in your stomach when you, <laughs> you know, yeah, when you about to step onto the track to go out and compete. Like you miss like the, the smell, like, you know, of the track, like, you know, um, the, 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 the firing gun. Yeah. Um, you know, the spice, like putting on Icy Hot and stuff like that, like, you just miss, like, the whole, like, feeling that you get, you know, leading up to a race. Yeah, you, you just miss it. Like you said, I mean, like, when it's something that you just dedicate all of your time to and, um, and you love it, and then I feel like, you know, it doesn't love you back. I mean, it just, it, I don't know, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, it's sad. You just miss, like, the small things that you don't really get an appreciation for, um, before that so I feel like going back into it you know I'll be more you know conscious of just taking in every moment taking in every opportunity that I get just to cherish it because you know obviously it don't last forever um, and so I want to make the best of my time that I have you know while I'm still in it so so you were born March of 96 which means that for the first time in your lifetime the Atlanta Braves are world <laughs> champions in right. baseball. That has yeah. to be special for you. It's the, it's the first time um, that you're around for this. Yeah, first championship that I've, you know, been alive for and witnessed, like, for the city. And so um, it's huge. I feel like it's inspiring for, for anybody that's, you know, been born and raised here. Mm. Uh, unless you, you know, that, like, anything is possible. For a while, it seemed as if, like, <laughs> <laughs> it seemed as if, like, Took Atlanta, you know, was, was cursed, like, when it comes to, like, championships. And so... Um, I feel like, you know, the Braves just kind of gave us a breakthrough. Hopefully we can carry that momentum, like, for all of our sports teams. Um, but I feel like, honestly, I feel like it's motivational just for people that were born and raised here to just go out and um, do great things and just represent the city. So now that you're back, where can we expect to see you? Are you going to run World Indoors next year, you think? Um, we know that you are the, the reigning world champion, so we will see you in Eugene as long as everything is... Um as long as everything is okay with you, with you physically, right? Where, what are you, what are you expecting to have your comeback look like? Is it going to be indoors first? Is it going to be outdoors? Do you have a sense of that yet? I'll definitely be running indoors, so that's the plan so far. Just training right now. We're just now tapping into like a little bit more speed, speed. work. Just kind of slowly like building into it. I guess we won't be like doing anything to be like fully like you know ready to peak like I would be for like, you know, outdoors as I would be indoors. But um, I'm definitely, that's the plan to be prepared for, you know, world indoors, <clears throat> run a few meets before that and go and try to defend my title. Um, and then from there, take it in the outdoors and um, go to Eugene and, and try to defend my title there. So I think I have a, a lot to uh, look forward to. And so, uh, yeah, like I was saying, I'm, I'm pretty excited, so. I was undersized. You were undersized. There is a young kid, and maybe it's not even a, a, a boy, maybe it's a young girl, and they are looking at you now, and they're saying, okay, so my path is similar to him. Nobody is gonna look at me and think I'm a physical specimen, right. but I have a <coughs> burning desire to be great. Yep. I wanna be a world champion, I wanna be an Olympic champion, I wanna represent my country in the Olympic Games. Give them a little bit of advice as to what how strong you had to be mentally to sort of overcome everybody constantly reminding you of what you're not and focusing on what you were. Right. Um, I think that's the thing that's most inspiring and motivational for me is, is knowing that people look at me for yes. a point of, of inspiration and, and knowing that people look at me and can follow my journey, can follow my path. And they, you know, tell me all the time that they, you know, look up to me yeah. and stuff like that just to know that I'm not just doing it for myself but it's you know bigger than me I mean I feel like mentally I mean you just as a competitor you have to be had to be tough you have to be strong um, one of the things that my like like you said being undersized like my dad would always tell me like uh, other guys like have to prove that they can't play you know guys that you know fit the are big yeah. are big you yeah. know what I'm saying had the you know right size for, for sports and whatnot but a guy like me, like I had to prove that I can play, you know, every opportunity. And so that's kind of the mentality that I take into the sport of track and field. Like I just go out and every opportunity that I get, I, you know, try to just showcase my talent and, and just try to be prepared just to when I 
get my chance, you know, prove that I'm the best. That's I think that's what just your mentality just has to be as a competitor. Um, you can't get wavered, you know, you have to stay kind of like even kill. You can't get too high, mm -hmm. you can't get too low, uh, you can't really listen to, you know, things that are going on on the outside. Just kind of just got to stay in your lane and just stay focused on what you feel like you can do. And I mean, like, when you do that, I feel like the sky's the limit, anything is possible, really. The United States men at the Olympics didn't win the 100, the 200, the four, the eight, or the four by one for the first time in Olympic history. There's never, that's never happened to a US team. Right. There are people who are on the side of the American fan base that say, we need Christian back. Uh -huh. We need Christian back to win us some gold medals. We talked a little bit about the lineup that's coming with multiple worlds and Olympics coming up pretty much very, very quickly here. Are you approaching the next five years as though I can cement my entire legacy by just dominating those, those, next, those next few years? That's kind of how I feel. I mean, um, and I think that was the that was the bright spot that kind of like got me through and kept me training, you know, through the whole thing. <clears throat> is that like, you know, every time I would speak to somebody, you know, I'd be walking down the street and, you know, here in Atlanta, like, you know, somebody would mm -hmm. stop me and just tell me like, you know, like we waiting on you to get back. Like, and so, I mean, it just got me like more and more excited, you know what I'm saying, to come back and, and do my thing really. And, and I, like you said, I mean, it's kind of like lining up to where, you know, we got these championships um, back to back throughout the years. It's my opportunity to come and um, kind of dominate the sport, you know? And so um, I think my job is to just kind of be prepared, keep training and, and, and just be ready for the moment. Um, and I think, you know, with me and my coach, I think we'll be ready. It'll be, it'll be pretty special. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta keep going strong, on 10 what I'm on. Having doubts about this, but I've been writing my wrongs. Feel this in my songs, feel this through my bones. Think about why I just do this, then I'm back in my zone. No road to riches, yeah. Lord knows I'm on a mission, yeah. Gifted, I know.